Comets are the leftover material from the formation of the solar system. Most of them are presumed to exist in a very long, slow orbit, way out in the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is the remains of the very early stages of our solar system's formation. It spans beyond the orbits of Neptune and Pluto and extends away from the Sun for about a light year in distance. It extends so far, it reaches halfway to our nearest stellar neighbor, Proxima Centauri. Most are composed of ice, water, and other gases in frozen form. There are bits of more solid mineral material as well. Occasionally, something out there in the Oort cloud will perturb the orbit of a comet and send it inward towards the inner planets in the Sun. Some provide spectacular shows as the comet approaches the Sun in the exterior heat's outgassing material, which we see as the comet's tail. So there are three kinds of comets. Short-period comets, like Halley, have an orbit around the Sun, just like the Earth and the planets but more oval, of under about 100 years. Then there are the long-period comets, which may over term turn into short-period comets, which may have orbital periods of thousands of years. Then there are the whole group of comets in hyperbolic orbits, which go around the Sun once and then out into interstellar space, never to come back. Comet 21 was the second interstellar object detected in our solar system. After Oumuamua, which makes it unique because it allows humans to study extrasolar planetary systems. So in terms of what is currently known, it is definite that it is an interstellar body, a sample of a material deposited in the solar system from an external planetary body. However, what is cool is not necessarily what we know strictly about 21, but what we can extrapolate from the very presence of 21. As Professor Fitzsimmons stated in his study, the discovery confirms predictions that planetary systems can eject large numbers of icy planet estimals into interstellar space, which can become active comets if they pass close enough to our Sun. This matches what we believe happened in our solar system during the time of planet formation and migration. Additionally, the comet's fairly normal behavior indicates the presence of similar comet formation regions in other solar systems. 67P or the Churvi Umov Garasi Menko was discovered in 1969 by Soviet astronomers Klim Churi Umov and Svetlana Garasimenko from Ukraine using a telescope in Kazakhstan. They were looking for another comet. The comet has an orbital period of 6.5 years on a high elliptical orbit around the Sun. Before we discovered it, the comet was there for billions of years since the solar system's formation. Ten years before its discovery, the comet had a perihelion, its closest distance to the Sun, of 2.7 astronomical units and after a close encounter with Jupiter, the perihelium decreased to 1.24 astronomical units, so somewhere between the orbits of Mars and Earth. It was visited in 2014 and 2015 by the ESA spacecraft, not NASA, Rosetta, which attempted a soft landing using a robotic probe called Philae on November 12, 2014. The Philae landing worked somewhat. The probe got down but could not attach to the surface, bounced around a bit, and landed in a shadowy spot so that his batteries could not recharge. Filet managed to send some interesting pictures and some surface data before the batteries were dead. There's a whole lot of interesting chemistry going on. At least 16 organic compounds mean that they were based on carbon, and interestingly, quite a lot of free molecule oxygen which does not come from the surface, but may be primordial. Granted, the comet probably has water and organic compounds, but there is no evidence of life in it yet. So, was the Rosetta mission worthwhile? Was it a good use of resources? Rosetta was an important and valuable mission. It could be one of the most important missions ever. Comets are extremely old and primitive. They contain evidence of the beginning of the solar system and the cloud that preceded it. While planets and moons have evolved, comets are essentially frozen in time until they approach the sun. It is believed that Earth obtained its oceans from comets, and some also suggest that organic compounds that led to the formation of life may have been provided by those same comets. Recent evidence suggests some of these comets were older than our own solar system. Rosetta's objective is to improve our understanding of the origin and evolution of our solar system. It is the first mission to orbit and soft land on a comet. It is the first to, up close, study the changes of a comet as it approaches the sun. It is the first to dig into a comet and study the subsurface. Rosetta's orbiter and lander contain a robust science payload. There are cameras, spectrometers, and other sensors covering the light spectrum. There is a drill that will dig about 8 inches below the surface. 
Rosetta will allow us to reach out and touch something possibly older than anything we've ever touched. The largest comet ever discovered has been traveling towards the sun for over one million years, and its gigantic scale shines a light on the mysterious objects that make up one of the biggest structures in our solar system. Based on the amount of light it reflects, the pair estimates that the comet, called C-2014 UN-271 Bernardinelli Bernstein, is some 60 to 120 miles, 100 to 200 kilometers across. That's roughly 10 times the average diameter of other known comets. The researchers also estimate comet Bernardinelli Bernstein is some 1,000 times more massive than the average comet. That means it's not only the largest comet discovered in modern times, but also now the largest known member of the solar system's distant Oort cloud. The gigantic comet C-2014 UN-271 is barreling through the solar system at 22 miles per hour. But don't worry, the closest it will get to the sun is 1 billion miles, which is somewhat farther than Saturn's distance, and it won't happen until 2031. The nucleus of C-2014 UN-271 is about 50 times larger than that of other known comets, with the space agency NASA saying that its mass is thought to be an astonishing 500 trillion tons or 1 million times the mass of a normal comet. David Jouette, a professor of planetary science and astronomy at the University of California, Los Angeles, remarked, This comet is the tip of the iceberg for thousands of comets that are too obscure to see in the more distant part of the solar system. We've always suspected that this comet could be so big because it's so bright at such a great distance. Now we're sure. After it makes perihelion, the comet will be outbound, back to the Oort cloud, with the next aphelion, the furthest distance from the sun, estimated to take place at a distance of 54,000 astronomical units, or about one light year. The outbound orbit will take about 4.5 million years. The comet will not be quite as bright as Pluto at perihelion, and you will need a large telescope to even see it. This object is just barely tethered to the sun's gravitational field. The human species will likely be extinct by the time it next returns to the inner solar system, which is sort of sad. But there is one comet that people have been observing for generations. The Chinese and Babylonians record it as far back as 240 BC, but it's probably been in roughly that orbit for 16,000 to 200,000 years. We're talking about Halley's Comet. Halley's Comet is in a very elliptical orbit, and it takes the comet 75 to 76 years to complete a full orbit. The period is not exact because it is affected by turbulations caused by the planets in the solar system. Nevertheless, this phenomenon has been observed for generations and will likely continue to be the star attraction every 75 years, meaning this is one of the oldest comets every generation of people can see once. It is a reminder of just how marvelous and beautiful the solar system can be. So there you are, guys. What do you think about these strange foreign visitors? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.